Today our scripture reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 11 to 25. Beloved, I urge you as a sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God that by doing good you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the unjust. For this is a gracious thing when mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if, when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseers of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we continue our sermon series on uh, 1 Peter. And uh, the Apostle Peter in this epistle he talks about us being exiles on this earth and he says, well, you live on this planet, you live in your countries, but in reality, your true home is the kingdom of God. Uh, do, not, do not get attached to this uh, earth and all the earthly things. Uh, be like exiles and sojourners, which means foreigners. And a foreigner, when a foreigner is in a certain country, if you see, you know, tourists in a certain country, they do not buy property, they do not try to, uh, you know, make their life comfortable there. They uh, have temporary arrangements and then they move on. And this is what uh, St. Peter is telling us to do. He says, well, you are here just temporary. So, and then he also tells us that we have been born again, that we are now spiritual beings, and spiritual beings, uh, we 
think now about spiritual things, not just tangible, not just things that we can touch, such as a house or money or career or anything else. He says, now your focus should be on spiritual things. And then he says something mind-blowing. He says that God has prepared for you amazing inheritance in heaven, which is imperishable, which never, never perishes. And then he continues telling us about us being living stones. And he says, well, you know, God lives in you and you are spiritual stones. Now your life should be different from that of the world. People who live in the world, they think in a certain way, they have certain priorities, they enjoy life in a certain way, but you are different. You Christians are different now. And then he continues um, with our today's uh, scripture reading. He continues to teach us something very important. He says in verse 11, Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh which wage war against your soul. Again, his focus is on the spiritual. He is more concerned about our soul than our flesh and our body. We, uh, in our turn, are very much concerned with, 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 with our bodies. We are concerned with our uh, livelihood here, not so much the spiritual thing. So we need to learn from the Apostle Peter to have right priorities. Okay. Uh, abstain from the passions of the flesh and you know the passions of the flesh it can be anything it can be anger it can be envy it can be uh, fear it can be lust it can be everything that takes over uh, your heart and your mind and the Apostle Peter talks about that in chapter 1 he says be sober-minded he says do not be intoxicated with all kinds of emotions that distract you from, from God and his kingdom and his peace and his love. And then he says, keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. And, you know, today they speak about Christians as evildoers, uh, in particular as haters. You know, hate speech or, you know, these Christians, they hate everybody. They talk about one God. They talk about marriage for one man, one woman. So people hate Christians today, uh, but it hated them even more back then because, you know, like today, Christians would say, well, there is just one God and there is just one Savior and one Lord that is Jesus Christ and if you remember the Roman Empire was very much like today's society it was multicultural so the Romans they would conquer different countries and then each country would have their own gods and then what the Romans would say they would say guys you you know you live out, uh, under our rule and uh, you know what you have different gods but in reality they are the same gods but under different different names and you need to tolerate one another and you need to live peacefully and that reminds us about today's uh, you know multicultural societies like you need to you know there is no one true God you know it is the same God you know for everyone but Christians they were like no Jesus Christ is the only way Jesus Christ is the true God there is just one true God and there is just one way to salvation. And of course, to the Roman authorities and to the Roman Empire, you know, Christians were seen as troublemakers. All of a sudden they cause problems. And that is the reason by the why, by the way, why they were killed and executed and thrown to all those wild animals. Because now the Romans would say, well, these Christians, they not just you know, teach that Jesus is the only way, but they also now, you know, come together and they eat, you know, some sort of body and blood at their, you know, Lord's suppers. And they thought that Christians ate uh, actual, you know, 
blood and, 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 and flesh of, of babies and you know they, they would make up all kind of things. So now you can see that people could speak against Christians as evildoers and Peter says now you know live live honorably conduct yourself honorably so that when they speak against you as evildoers they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. So now we are completely free as Christians, <clears throat> we are free in Christ, but then the Apostle Peter says, think how you use your freedom. And you know, even today when uh, our society is so divided and there are so many different opinions, we Christians are called to use our freedom wisely and to conduct ourselves honorably. And then he continues, uh, he says, be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution. So this is the next slide. Be subject to the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. So now, again, in the Roman Empire, the supreme authority belonged to the emperor. <clears throat> and back then, when uh, Peter was writing this, it wasn't a very good emperor, it was Emperor Nero who would uh, kill and persecute Christians, by the way. Now, it's very interesting when Peter says, be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution. Christians have had this dilemma for many, 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 many centuries. What do we do in our relationship with authorities, with the government? You know, how do, how do we behave? And of course, you, you, you would always see this verse and you would think, okay, what does it mean to me? What it means to be subject uh, to every human institution, uh, be it uh, emperor or governors, right? Or police officers or anybody else. What does it mean to me? And we need to remember that this is Apostle Peter who writes it, and the Apostle Peter has two very interesting experiences in his life. And uh, the first experience was uh, when Jesus was still alive, when Jesus was still alive, so it's uh, John chapter 18, we read uh, about uh, Jesus the night before he is arrested and crucified, uh, now we can see that there is a group of soldiers and uh, temple uh, officers they they look for him and they want to arrest him and we see peter and peter has a sword and do you remember when they come to arrest jesus what does peter do uh, peter attacks one of those officers and he cuts his right ear off because he wants to defend Jesus with, with a sword in his hand, and this is what he is doing. And then, what does Jesus do? Well, Jesus says, stop. Don't do that. Don't do that. And then Jesus heals that guy who lost his ear, and he heals his ear. Okay? So now what does Jesus do? Jesus actually allows them to arrest him, and then Jesus allows them to crucify him, right? Now, this is Peter's experience. Peter, he was very brave, and he wanted to defend Jesus, and he wanted to defend what is right, and he was ready to defend it with a sword in his hand. But Jesus stopped him from this violence. He said, no violence. And then there was a second episode and experience in Peter's life, and this is Acts chapter 5. And we can read that <clears throat> Peter is preaching about Jesus, and he says that Jesus is the Messiah. And then, again, authorities, local authorities, you know, the temple people, you know, priests, high priests, they gather together and they say, what, what do we do? This guy is preaching about Jesus. And then they invite Peter and they say, stop. Stop talking about this man. We command you. Authorities command him to stop. And then what does, what does Peter say? He, say? he says, shall we obey God or shall we obey people? And he says, 
he, and then he goes into disobedience to authorities. He keeps preaching about Jesus and then uh, <clears throat> just count how many times Peter is in prison and then count how many times uh, Paul is in prison, Apostle Paul is in prison, you know. And why are, are they in prison? Well, specifically because they disobeyed uh, the authorities and they preached about Jesus Christ. And that is the reason they ended up in prison so many times. And this is the reason none of the apostles died of natural death. Only apostle, the apostle John, he died because he was old. But all the other apostles, they were executed. And you execute who? You execute somebody who is, uh, is criminal, right? Who, who, who disobeys. So now, on the one hand, we can see Peter trying to use this sword, violence, rebellion, rebe rebellion, violence, resistance, and Jesus stops him. And never ever we see again Peter with a sword in his hand. But does it mean that Peter was ready, ready to, to do whatever you know, the authorities were telling him to do? And, and, and this is not true. This is not what he means, because when it comes to the authorities telling him to do something against God's will, Peter would disobey, and he would get in trouble, and would suffer, and again disobey, and get in trouble, and suffer. Now, let us go back. Now, Peter is right. go back to our scripture reading. Now, Peter is writing uh, this um, letter already you know having had all those experience experiences we talked about and here he says be subject to every human institution now what does it mean uh, was peter always uh, obedient uh, to every human institution no he was not uh, was he subject yes now we need to see the difference between the subject and be, being subject and being obedient because Subject means that you do not rebel with arms. You do not. Uh, you do not. Uh, you, you do. You do not violently rebel. You do not violently uh, oppose something. Right. So you oppose. You can have. You can show disobedience, and then you will suffer for that. And this is the road uh, the apostle Peter took, and this is the road the apostle Paul took. Yeah, they were disobedient uh, in those cases when the authorities would tell them to do something against God's will. They were obedient to the authorities in those cases when it was just the matter of civil and you know civil uh, order. You, you know he says, well, if you have a governor who punishes those who do evil and praises those those who do good, obey them. Because this is the role of the governor, right? If you have a governor who, who does his job well, punishes uh, those who do evil and praises those who do good, well, just, you know, respect that. Because Christians would normally be accused of, of being troublemakers, and Peter says, no, no, behave well, respect all the laws. But when it comes to the will of God, here you should listen to God more than you listen to people. And then he explains why we should be subject. Uh, he says, for the Lord's sake. And who is the Lord here? Jesus Christ. And then he unpacks it. He unpacks it. He says, verse 21, for to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you. Okay, he says, Christ suffered for you. And we need to understand that for the Christian, the ultimate example is not a certain person, it's Jesus Christ himself. Now, Jesus suffered. And, and, and this is was right before, uh, you know, the apostle Peter's eyes. He saw how Jesus refused to rebel and refused to fight with those, with those Roman soldiers and temple officers who came to arrest Jesus, you know, and put him to death. Jesus was right, there was no sin in him, he didn't deserve anything, and he said, okay, let us go ahead, and he suffered. So, and Peter followed his example, and the apostle Paul followed his example as well. Right, So they did not fight the Roman Empire, but they still were extremely firm in preaching the truth of the gospel. 
because our kingdom and, 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 you know, and you know, Jesus explains to Peter when, when Peter was trying to use his sword, Jesus explains to him, Peter, my kingdom is not of this, of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. So that is why, you know, Martin Luther, when, when the Turks were advancing in Europe, and now all of a sudden we had this Christian Europe, and there is this danger that it can become Muslim, you know, Muslim Europe, and, and, and Martin Luther, in the middle of this, you know, he says, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if we have Turks over us. What matters that we are faithful to Jesus. The form of government doesn't matter, says Martin Luther, because we, church, we Christians, we belong to a different kingdom. So now, servants, be subject to your masters with all respect not only to the good and gentle, but also to the unjust. For this is a gracious thing when, mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. And this is counterintuitive thought. You think, oh, but it's unjust. And you can hear people exclaiming all the time, but it's unfair, it's unjust. Now, how do we Christians act if we find ourselves in unjust situations? Right? So how do, how, do we, how do we act? So we are supposed to be firm and faithful in terms of our loyalty to Jesus and our beliefs. But at the same time, it's interesting that the apostles, they were not concerned. You, you, you know that in Judea, they had a group of people, they were called zealots, uh, who were trying to organize a revolution. And they tried at some point to invite Jesus to become their leader. And then Jesus said, no, no, no. I'm not becoming part of this revolutionary group, right? So, because my kingdom is different. So, we need to, when it comes to justice, and that when it comes to good, we need to do whatever we can. But at the same time, we need to be prepared to suffer and even to die for our beliefs, right? So this is what Apostle Peter says. He says, well, he doesn't justify the Roman Empire. He doesn't justify any political system. He just says, guys, your focus, your home is not here. That is why don't be so consumed into, into the matters, earthly matters, to such an extent that you no longer see Jesus, that you no longer see who your true king is, right? People who live in this world, they don't know Jesus, they just see this political system and they get engaged into this to such an extent that they can kill one another and do all kind of mean and nasty things, evil things. But he says, you're not like this. And then, and then he explains it. He, Jesus, committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. He was not guilty at all. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. So now, what does it mean? It means that it doesn't matter whether you live in the 21st century like us today or in the 16th century like Martin Luther or in the 3rd century as the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter. We, we have different political systems. We have different circumstances around us. But all we have in common, we have one God, one King, one Kingdom. This is what we have in common. And he says, well, look at Jesus. Jesus focused on him who just judges justly is God himself. Trust the Lord in each and every situation. Think about God and focus on God more than any, any uh, political uh, institution. And then, if you happen to live in a certain political situation, just follow the rules. And if they push you to disobey the will of God, then disobey them, right? So this is what did what Apostle 
what the Apostle Peter did. So he, 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 he didn't cause any trouble for the Roman Empire, but when it came to the gospel of Jesus, he, he would disobey. He would disobey. The same was with, with Martin Luther. He, he uh, would encourage all German peasants uh, to respect their uh, governments and to love their princes and to obey whatever political structure and situation they had. But when, when it came uh, to the word of God, when it came uh, to, to, to the gospel, uh, then Martin Luther rebelled against his authorities. You know, the Pope and the German Emperor, they just rebelled. They just disobeyed, right? So the same is true for us today. We need to be able to discern when it doesn't, when it doesn't interfere with our, um, you know, Christian beliefs, then we obey. And then when it's like normal civil, uh, civil order and uh, civil you know, laws, we obey. But when it interferes with, with our faith and uh, with the gospel, so then we may disobey. But we need to be prepared that when we disobey, we will suffer because the political system will punish us. And this is what happened, this is what happened with, with the Apostle Paul. The Roman system, which he disobeyed, uh, punished him and, and, and executed him, right? So P Paul was, was executed as well. You, you know, Peter was crucified, you know. Paul was uh, beheaded. Uh, so now Martin Luther, he also was punished by his system. So the, the German Empire and the Pope, they fought back against Luther and the reformers and they killed so many people and so many pastors and eventually they captured you know, people who protected Martin Luther, put them in prison, all those princes. It was terrible, right? The system fought back. And even today we can see how our today's political system may punish and persecute Christians, right? So, but then what do we do? we, we uh, suffer and we know that we will receive our reward from the Lord we should not be afraid to suffer for the Lord he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness by his wounds you have been healed for you were straying like sheep but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls so now, again, don't focus on politics too much. When it's possible, do what you can do. But never lose focus of Jesus. Always remember who you are in Jesus. Always remember where your true kingdom is. So this is what Apostle Peter teaches us in this, in this chapter, in this section. And I hope... I hope, and again, I cannot tell you what is right, what is good. I'm coming from a place where Christianity was persecuted. You know that the, we were under the Soviets' uh, totalitarian control. You don't, you can't have a Bible. They tell you what to believe, what to think. So I'm coming from that place where people. When I, when I was growing up, people didn't have any freedoms at all. So the government was controlling everything. So, and then Christians, would they start any, uh, any revolts? No. Uh, were they persecuted? Yes. Uh, many Christians were sent to concentration camps. Now, they would disobey. They would not renounce Jesus. So... I remember one lady, so she was a famous poet, she was put in, into, into a cell uh, and they tortured her with cold, uh, with cold, and the only thing they wanted from her, just renounce Jesus, just say you no longer believe in Jesus, we let you go. A and she says, no, I mean, she got all kinds of problems because she was sleeping on the concrete floor and it was like, you know, freezing outside. It was winter and no heating and everything. And every day, KGB officer would enter her cell and he would say, well, renounce Jesus, we let you go today. Renounce Jesus, we let you go. And so all you need to do, just say, I no longer believe in Jesus. And she says, no, no, no. And she suffered. So... It's difficult. Each of us has to decide what we do as Christians. 
but we should never lose our sight of Jesus and we should always remember who our true king is and where our kingdom is located. And may God help us. Amen.